Welcome back, America. Our next guest had a conservative track record working as a representative in the Florida State House, and he was just reelected overwhelmingly as Florida's chief financial officer, overseeing the state's investment portfolio and returning at least $1.2 billion in unclaimed property back to the state's citizens. Jimmy Petronas joins us now from the Sunshine State. Uh, chief Petronas, great to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me, John. It's an amazing story of what you've done. A lot of people, uh, we've been talking on this show for a long time about the dangers of the environmental social governance movement, the ESG movement, mm -hmm. and people have passed some laws, they've done some things, but you didn't mess around. You just said, you know what? You're in this business, you lose Florida's investments. Tell us what you did with BlackRock. Sure, so look, um, I've been in this process now for a pretty good while. I did a, a term in the restaurant business. I was there for about 30 years. Uh, and look, I know what it takes to run a small business and also have been through the state of Florida when we had the foreclosure crisis. So Florida's right now, their finances are the best they've ever been in the history of the state of Florida. But I know we're in a recession. I know it's going to get worse. And I need fund managers who have their head in the game. I need to be 100 percent focused on the bottom line and return on investment. And in the case of BlackRock, they're running in the middle of the pack and they definitely showed me that their mission is, is yeah, the bottom line, that's also very heavily focused on ESG, which is not, in my opinion, in the best fiduciary responsibility for the taxpayers of the state of Florida. It's a pretty powerful message when you, you tug at the purse strings, you really get their attention. What was BlackRock's reaction when you got this done? Look, I, I, the, some of the feedback that I got was, well, we're we're disappointed. We put $60 billion of investments in the state of Florida. And, and my response to that is, yeah, you put money in the state of Florida because we hustle, we work, we're responsible to the taxpayers. We're expedient when it comes to permitting and transparency in government. Anybody in the right mind should be investing in this state. So look, pat yourself on back on the back for investing where business does well, and it does well in the state of Florida. Yeah, such a great, uh, such a great message, and and it's funny that they would use that as their defense. Um, as you, <laughs> as you, do, you've done so many things that I think are setting a model for other state uh, states to follow as for their chief financial officers, for their treasurers. Uh, one of the things that I thought has been really incredible, you've returned one point two billion dollars of unclaimed property that had been citizen uh, uh, held from citizens. You're getting it back to the citizens. Talk about that project. So if you visit fltreasurehunt.gov, especially if you're a Florida resident, yep. you will find a, an, an unbelievable treasure trove. One in five Floridians has something there. It's uh, utility deposits, cable deposits, uncashed paychecks. You name it, it is in our treasury, and we would just would love to reunite you with your lost money. Yeah, what a great idea, and I'm sure it's incredibly popular. And you made it fun, too. Even just the sound of it sounds fun, and it gets people engaged. <laughs> yeah, serious business, but made to at least get people's attention. Um, you've done another thing that I think is key. And we, you know, we're here in Washington now. All we talk about mm -hmm. is that $400 billion we gave away in COVID aid fraudulently or to people who weren't entitled to get it. You've arrested over 3,000 criminals who helped commit insurance fraud or other forms of fraud against the state. You yeah. know, 75,000 insurance claims. Tell us a little bit about the mindset it takes to crack down on fraud and get taxpayers their money back. Well, and, and, the, and the challenges we've had in Florida, and we're going to have a special session. We had one earlier this year. We're going to have one the week of, uh, of December 14th. And, and insurance is a moving target because the scoundrels and the bad actors continue to find ways how to game the system inside of existing Florida law. So we have to constantly, it's not a sprint, it's a march. We've got to constantly try to outfox those that are gaming the system. Because as they game the system, all it does is make things like homes more unaffordable. It makes owning a car more expensive. And right now, in the environment right now, with the inflation that we're facing, I need to do everything humanly possible to make insurance as affordable as possible. So we continue to lean forward. We've got um, about 400 sworn law enforcement in my in my division, uh, my agency, uh, in that particular division that do nothing but focus on insurance fraud. Boy, that is amazing. Well, we can learn some lessons in Washington from your work, I'm sure. Um, another thing that you've taken the lead on, there's a lot of hurricanes that come through Florida. You've really mm -hmm. changed the mindset of how you mitigate natural disasters to save taxpayers, insurers, the state money. Tell us a little bit about that work, because I think that's groundbreaking. Sure. So over the last year, last legislative session, 
And again, during the special session, we've been leaning in with incentives to try to leverage taxpayers' dollars in ways of whether it be rebates or grant assistance to fortify and harden your home. And at the end of the day, if I'm willing to give you some incentive for you to make a bigger investment in your house with hurricane impact windows and doors, those ultimately make the bubble tougher. It makes it harder for a storm to hit your house. And it's not if a storm's going to hit, it's when. And it's amazing. The, the homes with Ian that, that invested in that type of technology, they survived. They survived. And the building codes in Florida, it is what it is. They're some of the toughest in the nation. But we live in paradise, and Mother Nature loves to wreak havoc every once in a while here. Yeah, it does. That it does. Well, this is a brilliant idea. Um, we got just a little bit of about a minute left. I want to ask about this. Republicans are taking over. They talk about a lot of the same values you have. You've actually achieved the sort of delivery on your values. What advice would you give re Republicans taking over the House, using the power of the purse string to achieve some of the reforms you've been able to do in Florida with Governor DeSantis? I, I plead with the electorate every single day, hold your elected accountable. You, we put our names on the ballot to serve. If you don't hold us accountable, you get the government you deserve. And I don't care if that's a school board, county commissioner, or a member of Congress, or your own CFO of the state of Florida. I, I can't stress enough, if you just allow government to go along its way unchecked, the policies that will be passed and executed will not be in the best interest of your household or Main Street. Yeah, so true, so true indeed. Well, Jim Patronis, the rest of the country has been watching what you're doing. They're taking note. I think they're beginning to emulate what you're doing. Congratulations on some remarkable work in Florida. Thank you so much and Merry Christmas. You as well, sir. Good to talk to you. All right, folks, we'll be right back with more engaging conversation right after these commercial messages.